Hey guys, what is up? Swim here for Evil Geniuses, and today we're going to be breaking down Legends of Runeterra color combinations. We're going to be looking at all 15 different possible color combinations and talking about which of them lead to certain playstyles or archetypes and which, most importantly, might suit you as a player best. Uh, now, I wanted to make this video because, as you might know, in Legends of Runeterra, there's six colors or regions. There's Demacia, Freljord, Ionia, Noxus, Piltover and Zaun, and Shadow Isles. And within these six regions, they obviously have their own themes, um, you know, as you, you would expect from a card game like Magic. But I think a bit more so than Magic or any other, like, card game similar to this, they actually have unique combinations between each other that are sort of greater than the sum of their parts. So, for example, like a Freljord Ionia deck will use very different components of Freljord than a Freljord Shadow Isles deck, right? And we're going to talk about, you know, obviously, within six different combina six different colors, you have got combinations of two. Uh, in all these combinations, there's 15 different total possible two-color combos. And with that, you emerge 15 different archetypes or playstyles or decks, right? Um, now, there's a bit more than 15 because a couple of the color combinations actually have a few different ways you can play them uh, very majorly. Um, but for the most part, you're not, you can't play three colors in Legends of Runeterra. And there's really no incentive to play one color. Even with a Legion, you're always going to do a splash. So 15 color combinations. Let's go. All right. And one final note, we're not going to be covering deck lists in this video. That's going to be in later videos. I know a lot of you guys want to see my decks, but uh, I'm not really ready with them yet. I need to take like a lot of time iterating and improving my decks until I feel like I'm ready to share them with you guys because I don't want to show you guys something unless I feel like it's really good. Okay. So we're just going to start off. I'm going to go ahead and spend, we're going to just breeze through these. There's 15 different combinations and we've got to get through them. So lightly touch on them. So Demacia and Piltover and on. I'll be calling this P and Z for short. This is an interesting color combination that's basically going to be built around spamming spells, and it's very controlly. So Ezreal, Heimerdinger, Lux uh, are kind of your three champions that you have as options, and you've got a lot of uh, units that basically scale with the amount of spells you play. So it's good for kind of like, or, sorry, spell. it's good for the kind of like long-term game plan of kind of staying alive, spamming a lot of spells, uh, and using kind of like late game finishers to close the game out. These kinds of decks tend to lead to very convoluted and unique scenarios, and there's a lot of skill involved in playing them for that reason. Okay, next up, in no particular order, let's go ahead and do PNZ and Noxus. Just to show you guys how different, you know, it's it's also using PNZ, but instead of using the spell side of PNZ, PNZ and Noxus combo is going to be using the discard side of PNZ. So discard is a keyword that you're going to see in a lot of card games, uh, and basically it just means you're getting rid of some tools in your hand to fuel other things. You're Champions here are Draven and Jinx, and this is an extremely aggressive uh, color combination that's going to be using a lot of tools that need to be discarded to, to even like be useful. Um, and you're just going to be leveraging resources, emptying your hand so that your Jinx can level up and killing your opponent before they come online. So obviously Noxus, uh, a color or region that's a lot more aggressive skewed. Uh, let's see how it combines with Freljord, uh, kind of beefy mid-range body. Well, Noxus Freljord usually ends up involving a kind of fairly aggressive, but I would say more mid-range combo style self-wound deck even that uses Vladimir as its kind of core uh, champion, and often Braum as well. The goal of this deck is actually very interesting. Basically, you want to damage your own units um, because you have a lot of units that whenever they survive damage, they're going to get permanent bonuses, or even do some interesting things. Uh, Scar Mother Vrina is a very powerful mid-game finisher, and you're even going to be uh, leveling up your Braum by dealing damage to him. There's a lot of like very interesting board states where you have to make uh, pretty crazy decisions with this one, although you are still a mid-range deck, so it takes like kind of medium length of time. You are going to be trying to kill your opponent usually on turn 7, turn 8, turn 9. Okay, next up, let's see how Freljord's large dudes combine with Shadow Isles. Shadow Isles is a very interesting alliance. They're kind of necromancy, like death magic. 
They usually sacrifice their own units. Um, and when you combine these two together, you get uh, often the kind of late game control deck uh, with some interesting combos. So most late game deck we've talked about so far for sure. Uh, and Trindamir is going to be an extremely powerful, reliable finisher. Freljord uh, gives you power when you hit the late game. And Shadow Isles can control the game to a decent point to allow you to, you know, not die too early. And Nivea is a very, very powerful champion here in this color combination because you have a lot of Shadow Isles cards that are going going to be able to grant a Nivea an ephemeral copy, which will create a new egg and sort of clone indefinitely in that way. Uh, but basically, you're looking at kind of a late game control archetype that's going to be sacrificing a lot of units while kind of stalling the game out, ready for a big finisher. Ultimately, this is a color combination you can actually use in a few different ways. Some decks, instead of going for like a more like game control plan, are more focused around Anivia uh, and just kind of abusing that over and over again. And there's even some token swarm potential. Uh, there is the Iceborne Legacy card that can buff everything of the same name. And there's even the pack mentality in Freljord that will buff everything of the same group. And that's a really great uh, use with the Spider Swarm, a uh, very like kind of token heavy uh, play style with like Elise and a lot of her spider summons. So that can be more of like an aggro y, almost zoo deck. All right, let's see how Shadow Isles will match with Ionia. Uh, so in Ionia, you've got a lot of like your own kind of manipulation based spells. And the combination of Shadow Isles Ionia usually leads to an ephemeral deck with Hecarim as its leader. So ephemeral is a keyword, which means your unit can only last that round. And you're often going to be using Shark Chariot with this as well. So basically the idea behind this deck is every time you attack with Shark Chariot, it gets the attack in and then it dies because it's ephemeral. But it revives every time you play more ephemeral allies. So most of your allies uh, in the game are only going to last the turn they attack, but you resummon them and resurrect them through uh, many means, uh, including using uh, Zed's ability, because even when Zed does his attack, he creates the living shadow. Uh, that is ephemeral as well. So basically, it's very kind of bursty. It's very combo heavy. You can play this deck to a few different speeds. Uh, you can build it as a more aggressive, like very aggro version that just plans on winning the turn it plays Hecarim, or more mid rangey, a little slower, but just looking to grind down your opponent with sharks. It's actually a very nuanced deck to play. Um, there's a lot going on in this one. All right, so back to Demacia. Let's see how Ionia uniquely combines with Damasia. And uh, Ionia Damasia usually involves the Fiora Shen Barrier deck. So Fiora is a very unique champion who, when she kills four enemies and she's not dead, you win. It's sort of like an Exodia. It's like an alternate win condition, basically. So you use Shen and a lot of barrier effects to keep her alive, keep her healthy. And uh, again, you're playing for a unique condition. You're not trying to kill the opponent Nexus necessarily. Sometimes you end up doing that anyway. But if you can have a Fiora, protect her with enough barriers, enough spells, you know, you always want to keep this combo close. So you're going to be using spells like Deny. Uh, and a really great finisher is Judgment as well. <laughs> because, of course, when you use this on Fiora and she has a decent run of attack, you will pretty often win the game if your opponent can't do anything about it. Another thing uh, that this deck will use is Greenglade Caretaker. When an ally gets barrier, this permanently just gets to attack. It looks pretty, you know, innocuous at first. I've seen this thing reach 30-something uh, plus attack before, so this is a really, really scary card in just the full barrier deck. So yeah, Demacia and Ionia usually specializes in this way when combined together. Uh, another way you can use these colors together is with an elusive deck. So elusive is kind of like flying from magic. Basically it means when you attack with an elusive unit, it can't um, be blocked. It can only be blocked by another elusive unit if your opponent has one. And basically what that means is you can take one, buff it up quite a bit, and then slap a big finisher on it for sort of an OKTK or a one turn kill. So the big finisher could be Relentless Pursuit, which just gives you a second attack. So if you buff it up and then get a second attack, sometimes you can kill your opponent from just like 20 health on their Nexus or uh, Dawn and Dusk, or, uh, which can even triple your value, okay, uh, on your buff. So even if you have like a seven attack unit, if you create two copies of it, suddenly you're hitting Nexus for 21, which is always going to kill your opponent if they can't block it. 
So that's just another thing you can do with this color combination. And now hopefully you guys are seeing why I'm why I wanted to make this video because like each color combination is just so much more than the sum of its parts. It plays a lot more differently than just like the individual colors combined in a lot of situations. Anyway, let's continue because we've got several more to do. Let's do Demacia or Demacia uh, plus Shadow Isles. So Demacia plus Shadow Isles uh, is often going to be using Lucian if they want to run those together. Now Lucian is a very aggressive unit who has an extremely powerful effect when level up. He can uh, attack twice in a single combat instance, uh, and the first time an ally Daisy Trowned, he readies your attack. So Demacia and Shadow Isles uh, all have a lot of cards that say, you know, when something died. If an ally died this round, if an ally died this round, uh, and you can empower a lot of Demacia cards by basically sacrificing a lot of your Shadow Isles cards. Keep in mind, Shadow Isles has a lot of tokens, uh, and oftentimes they're going to be sacrificing their units for their own means. So a really big enabler for this is going to be Haunting Relic, uh, a very cheap Shadow Isles card that will summon three little 1-1s one that will die at the end of the turn, and that will almost immediately activate your Lucian and may trigger a lot of your other uh, Demacian spell effects. Okay, let's see how Shadow Isles combos with Noxus. Noxus obviously being kind of the most aggressive region. Uh, typically, uh, the tie-in here is these spider builds. Now, you guys know a lot of spiders from Elise, but Nox has a few spiders of its own as well. In particular, you know, the synergy point of Arachnoid Host, which buffs all of your other spider allies. So, this is just the kind of tie together. These two have all the spiders. Elise is your champion, and typically... It's going to be a pretty aggressive deck that plays very swarmy. A lot of tokens are going to go on here. Next up, Noxus and let's do Ionia. So Noxus and Ionia is actually a very, very unique combination. Typically, these are going to be the kind of disruption archetype, the stun or recall, basically. So uh, we can look at a lot of options here, but you're going to be running Yasuo and sometimes Katarina as well uh, for some ability to do that. But basically, you're going to be using Yasuo and Fey Blade Twirler. And whenever you stun a recall unit, Yasuo will hit it. Uh, and Fey Blade Twirler will grow very big by the end of the game. Legion General can be a very powerful finisher here. Basically, you do a lot of recalls. Recall just means return something to hand, your card or your opponent's, depending. And stunning means it's disabled for one turn. Uh, basically, you're kind of kind of annoying your opponent by not necessarily letting them play their stuff or attack with their stuff. And you typically want to stall these on late. I see a lot of people, myself included, because I've messed around with this uh, incorrectly before, but I do see a lot of people run this like too aggressive, like aggro or mid-range. And in my mind, this is much more of a late game or control deck. You're just kind of stalling out the game until, you know, your Yasuo is leveling up. And until you can get to even like minus Swift Foot, this is a very, very powerful finisher. If you're playing the game at a slow pace, recall three enemies, it just bounces three enemies back into the hand and you can just attack with everything sometimes your fey blade twirlers will get really really massive as well uh, you're probably going to see these at like 20 attack and legion generals will be at like 15 15 so it's a very very unique deck um and you are uh buffing and chaining stats like crazy okay let's see what happens when we add Freljord to this Ionia. So Freljord and Ionia, there's a couple ways to play this. I don't know how much support this necessarily has, but if you want a control karma deck, this is going to be it. Freljord has the ramp tools that are going to allow you to play your karma earlier for value at 10 mana. Because karma, when you have 10 mana, she levels up and doubles the cast of all your spells. So you can go ahead and stall out the game a bit with Freljord's tools like Avalanche, get these mana points a little bit earlier, and then Karma can kind of start taking control of the game in a very kind of control-heavy spell castery sort of play style. Another interesting thing you can do with uh, Ionia and Freljord is a Poro deck. Now, there's a lot of ways to run Poros, but one of my favorites is actually doing it almost mono Freljord with an Ionia Splash. And the reason we're splashing Ionia is because Poro Snacks and maybe like a copy of Deny or something, is basically the only spell you run for River Shaper. And if Poros Snacks is one of, you know, one or two spells in your deck, 
then River Shaper will almost always be drawing you Poro Snacks, and you can spam out very efficient Poro Stats. That's not really a good deck, but it is one of the uses for Freljord Ionia. So now let's check out Freljord and Demacia. Freljord and Demacia is actually probably one of the lowest synergy combinations. But one way I like to potentially run this is with elites. So Demacia has a built-in kind of sub-archetype called Elite, uh, which basically is a tag on units that all buff each other. And one thing you can do with Freljord that's pretty cute is combine your elites with Pack Mentality, a pretty powerful finisher as long as you're buffing everything of the same group, uh, in this case the tag Elite. Um, so that can be one way of running the Elite build. When you take Demacia and when you instead combine it with Noxus, there's actually, this is, I, I would say, probably the single kind of lowest synergy. There's not really anything super unique going on in this color combination, but typically if you're going to be running these together, you're probably going to be running a pretty, fairly like kind of aggressive, not hyper aggressive, but kind of low to the ground mid-range deck, if anything, looking to, you know, end the game within a certain turn, because both of these alliances use a lot of cards that can kind of like flood the board and get a lot of early game value. Let's finish up P and Z. I think we missed a couple of things here. So P and Z and Shadow Isles, a pretty interesting combination. You can play this very controlly. Shadow Isles has a lot of like, you know, spells that might be kind of like triggering your, you know, Heimerdinger, uh, work its way into a spell deck. Um, but one additional thing you could do, and you know, maybe this is not necessarily a super competitive deck, is abuse Professor Von Yip's ability to work with kind of the token swarm of the Shadow Isles. This card is uh, probably not like super high tier, and you know, it's just one card. Sometimes it's hard to build a deck around as an entire card because you don't always draw it. But if you get it on the board and it sticks, you're just spamming one cost units with Shadow Isles. Because again, they've got all the tokens. Whenever you basically like play a spider, for example, like every time you attack with at least the spiderling will gain plus two plus two. So it could be, you know, the start of a sort of token swarm deck at the same time. Now, when you mix P and Z with Freljord, you have uh, basically something that's going to be uh, played as sort of like a kind of late game spellcaster deck as well. Uh, you also have one other kind of meme potential option. I don't think this is probably like the best kind of spellcaster deck. Uh, it seems like not necessarily as good as like combining P and Z with Demacia, um, but Freljord has some pretty decent spells as well. Um, but the other option you could do with this color combo combination is uh, kind of a little bit of a meme deck and that's Elnux. If you look at this card Troop of Elnux and you're you're you have a burning desire <laughs> to try to use Troop of Elnux and there's really only one way to do it and that's with the PNZ card counterfeit copies. This is obviously kind of a meme combination, but these are a match made in heaven. Shuffle four Elnux into your deck every time you play this, and sometimes you will have Big Daddy Elnux pull out his whole family. And last, but certainly not least, we have PNZ and Ionia, and you guys know that this is the Teemo deck. So Teemo is a pretty hilarious build around card. Um, this is fairly fairly non-competitive but honestly it's not impossible uh, to get a pretty decent win rate with a refined teemo deck basically the idea is every time your leveled up teemo hits the enemy nexus and it does have elusive so that's pretty easy you are doubling the poison puff caps in their deck what's puff cap it's a trap that as soon as they draw the card that it's placed on deals one to your nexus so you can have games where your opponent's like 20 card deck has like 800 puff caps scattered around in it. So on average, every card they draw is gonna deal like 40 damage to them. That's obviously an extreme case, but anytime you see this word double in a card game, there's always pretty hilarious things that you can do with that. So every time you attack, it's redoubling and redoubling, you know, it's two, four, eight, 16, 32, etc. Um, and when your opponent reaches like critical mass of too many puff caps, they will just die to their own draws. So, I think Ionia is probably the best way to support Teemo for a couple of reasons. Uh, I really like running Teemo with, oops, uh, Kinko Wayfinder. 
So this is a four mana card in Ionia that if you flip over the Ionian card, Allegiance means basically it will scale with probability with the ratio of Ionian cards to your deck. It flips the top card, and if it's the card of the same alliance, in this case Ionia or region, sorry, uh, summons two one-cost allies from our deck. Now the only one-cost ally in this deck is Teemo. This is actually, like, possibly unintended by the devs, um, but basically, you do have the ability to have two Teemos on board at the same time, which is sort of sort of breaking the game rules. Typically, you're not really supposed to have two champions on the board at the same time, unless you kind of cheat one out, because when you draw the second one, it turns into the spell. But Kinko Wayfinder allows you to pull two Teemos sometimes, and when you're redoubling the value, it's even better. Then you've got the good old Dawn and Dusk finisher, when you take a Teemo leveled up and you create two copies of it for a turn, then all three of them hit the face and you're casually multiplying the mushrooms in their deck by eight. That's a lot of mushrooms, okay? So that is probably the best way to run Teemo deck, you know, with Ionia. Um, and that's it. That's all the color combinations done. I really like how, and you know, if you've made it this far in the video, you, you kind of understand what I'm talking about. Every every color combination feels very different, right? And like all the all the champions are kind of used in one way or another. Like they tie certain things together, um, and it's pretty pretty cool card design. So we're gonna have to see like what things shape out uh, for the future of this game. But that was just it. That was my kind of beginner's guide to you know these are what the different colors tend to do. Maybe you as a player might be able to identify with some more than others. Um, and anyway. I guess that's going to be it for me, and I'll see you guys next time.